What is up, guys? It is AJ from MMA Experts, and we are talking about the UFC flyweight title card between Figadero Benavides. This card is stacked on Fight Island. We have 12 very good fights. I cannot wait. I am going to start from the top in terms of my prediction and talking about the fight and work my way down because I know some of you guys probably aren't interested in the undercard. Personally, I think it's a stacked undercard. You definitely should be, but if not, no problem. Check out the main quick picks here. So first, Benavidez, Figadero rematch. The first fight was a good one while it lasted. Figadero got the knockout. I predict Figadero getting the knockout again. I'm picking the fourth round rather than the second this time. I love Benavidez. I hope he pulls it off, but I do not see that happening. I think that this is his last title fight, and he probably will end up retiring sometime soon with the defeat here. Sad to say, but life sometimes doesn't... Uh, you know, work out as you want it to. And it's just a sad truth. It's just bad timing. You know, if maybe he would have ended up fighting Pantoja or something like that, he would have been a world champion in the UFC. Uh, so let's get to the co-main event. Gastelum Hermanson. I think it's a good back and forth fight here, um, but it could be boring though. It could be a clinch heavy fight against the cage uh, in Hermanson's favor there, but I think Gastelum will be able to keep him off. I predict the decision win for Gastelum could be a split. I think we'll end up landing a big punch somewhere along the lines and separating himself in terms of a decision victory. Uh, if not though, I do think Hermanson may end up following the Darren Till blueprint and clinching and trying to beat uh, Gastelum that way and he may be victorious in doing such. Jacasey Fizez. I think Jacasey's just a bit better overall. Fizez is really nice though with his striking, so don't underestimate him. But I do have Jacasey winning this fight by a decision. I think that he's uh, really getting a lot better, and I think that it's a, a fair assessment to think he wins this one. Now, Luana Carolina and Andre, or excuse me, Ariana Lipsky. Um, I want to bring up the notes here because honestly, off the top of my head, I can't even remember what my exact prediction was. Oh, all right. So I don't know why the hell this fight is on the main card. I'm not trying to sound like a dick or anything, but uh, Luana really needs to work on her striking. Her boxing's like pretty bad. To be 100% honest, with you, it's bad. Uh, Lipsky's known as the queen of Ireland. She goes by. I got Lipsky winning a decision. I think it's going to be harder than it should be, but I do think she still wins it and beats the 6-1 and one Carolina. Uh, Askarov versus Pantoja. This, to me, I don't know why the hell this is not you know, where Jacasey and Faziz is because this is a huge fight in the flyweight division. Kind of pisses me off a bit. They're not giving the flyweights the respect, but at least it's on the main card. As if it was on the undercard, I'd have a big fucking problem with it because I, I think flyweight's an underappreciated division. I've said it before, and these guys are awesome. These guys are so good at flyweight. You need so much skill to be that good at that division because it is stacked and everybody is so precise with technique. But that being said, I think Askarov actually pulls off the upset over Pantoja here. I think he's just uh, a bit more precise with his striking, and I think his grappling skills are really good. He's not going to get hit by Pantoja's wild shots, and he will not engage in a stupid brawl. We'll see Askarov with the decision. All right, so let's work our way to the prelims. For you guys that don't want to see the prelims, get the hell out of here. But if you do, you got to be in store for a treat because we have some good ones. Roman Deladze and Kadis Ibragamov. Or excuse me, Ibragamov. Uh, for Roman, he's making his UFC debut. Looks good. A lot of power. Hadis is a little bit chaotic with his striking sometimes, but uh, he's okay. He's got two straight losses in the UFC. I believe he's 0-2 in the octagon. I got Roman winning this fight by stoppage. I think he'll probably somewhere in the third round. I think it'll be a bit late, but I do think he's just a bit better than Cadiz. Um, I have my exact pick here. I want to make sure I said it right because who knows? I may have said that. Oh, excuse me. Second round. Sorry about that. Not third round. Second round. I believe second round. Um, I think that he'll just end up landing a big shot. He's a, a big power puncher, and stylistically, I just got him winning this one. Um, Grant Dawson, Nadin Armini, kind of a smash uh, fight in my opinion. It's kind of a squash match. It's kind of, kind of like one guy that's being bred to be a contender versus a guy that's coming off a loss. It's Grant Dawson all day. I predict he wins this fight. I think he gets a submission probably in the second round. I think that uh, should be pretty dominant by him. I don't think he'll face too much issues with Nad, who's tough and decent. But it's just it's the difference in levels here and difference in timing. One's on a big win streak. One's coming off a loss. We know what the UFC is trying to do here. Alvarez Duffy. Alvarez is pretty good. He's nasty off his back. Um, Duffy's really good with his hands. He beat Conor McGregor at one point. Um, I just don't think that Alvarez will be able to get him down. I don't think he'll really be able to hold him down if he does get him down. I think Duffy wins his fight by a decision. He'll show his precise technique. And he trains at TriStar, so he's around elite level fighters all the time. And I'm just picking Joe Duffy here. Uh, Montel Jackson, Brett Johns. I immediately wanted Brett Johns when I first was looking into footage, but man, Montel Jackson stylistically might just not be a good matchup for him. He's a good wrestler. He has a wrestling background and he's really freaking quick on the feet and he hits with some pop. And I feel like Brett Johns won't be able to deal with that. 
I got Montel Jackson winning this one. It will be a decision. Brett Johns is really good, though. I think he could improve, but I just think the style that he's going to bring forth won't work against Jackson. Um, Amir Albazi and Malcolm Gordon. Um, I want to look at the notes here because off the top of my head, I'll be honest, I can't tell you who I picked. All right, let's find it. All right, so Malcolm Gordon. Now I remember 100%. Malcolm Gordon, very impressive flyweight. I got him winning this fight by upset. Amir has a loss to Jose Shorty two fights ago. Um, I think Malcolm's just a better fighter. He was a champion in a different league called TKO, something like that. Um, not the best name for a league, to be honest. I don't know why he called it. Like, it's called knockout or something, TKO. Why, why you want to do a technical knockout? But whatever, that's besides the point. Um, but I think that Malcolm wins this fight. I think that he's a pretty good flyweight, and we could see where he takes it. And I think he's definitely better than Amir here, who is the favorite, though. Amir is the favorite. So uh, there's something that the odds makers are seeing, but I, I got Gordon winning this one. And now Davy Ramos versus Armand Tereksakan. Um, I think this fight is another fight that's a little bit too far back. I don't know why it's not higher up. These guys are really good and they're entertaining. 20-something years old for Armand. He might have been 23 versus 33. I got Armand winning this fight by decision. Uh, only losses uh, recently for both these guys are to Islam Makachev, who's in the top 15 at lightweight. So easily, easy pick there. I got Armand winning this one. Um, I think he gets it done by a hard-fought decision. Ramos will come to compete, but he won't get off early enough. And you'll see Armand landing more shots. Uh, Philippe Spivak uh, for Carlos. Philippe, I had a hard time finding footage, but I managed to find some, and it didn't look that good. I wasn't very impressed. Sergey Spivak, I've seen him fight live. I still went back and watched his fight with Tuivasa again because I feel like that was a good performance by him. Um, and if he does that, he'll be able to take Philippe down, dominate him, top control, probably a TKO. Um, I think my pick is say yeah, a second round TKO. I think he's just a bit better um, everywhere than this guy, and I think he's gonna have better conditioning. I think Philippe has nice hands though, so he better not be uh, too. Uh, you know, caution to the wind style. He, he better at least respect the hands of Philippe because he does have pro boxing experience as well. But Philippe's a bit a bit on the heavier side, a bit on the shorter side at heavyweight. I'm picking Spivak to get it done. I think he gets it down. Ground and pound, probably second round is when the ref will stop it. Thank you guys for watching this quick picks uh, post-fight show. We got a good card here. I'm telling you guys, you got to check out the early fights. I know a lot of people fall into this habit of only watching the main card, but there's so much potential talent on the undercard. The the former champs and the future champs and the current champs all were once on the undercard, or at least most of them were. And I really feel like you got to give these guys in the other car undercard a shot. And especially the guys I'm going to pick here to watch out for. Armand, watch out for him. I think he's pretty good. Um, I think Grant Dawson, without a doubt, you got to watch out for him. And also, I'd say watch out for Montel Jackson and Malcolm Gordon. I think those two both are, are solid fighters. I think Malcolm, I, I mean, I think he gets it done, and I think he's good, but I'm not saying elite, elite level, but I see top 15 material. Montel Jackson, top 15 material. Armand, though, who knows? He may have top 10, top 5 material. If it, you know, He's only 23 years old, and he's already fighting at the elite level, 23. 14 and 2. I'm impressed by this kid and Grant Dawson. Very impressive. Watch out for Grant. Grant is a guy to keep an eye on. He's fighting at 150 pound catch weight here, but I believe he's normally fighting at 45. And he's a guy to watch out for. He could be a top 15 guy sometime by the end of next year. Maybe even before then if they give him the right matchups. But they have been taking it a bit slow with him, which makes sense. You know, they don't want to rush their guy. Um, you know, he's not too old. I think he's 26. So why rush to get him into the top? But let me pull up the main card. Is there anybody I want you to watch out for? Yeah, Arskarov. Even though he's already a contender, um, I don't think many people know who he is. He's pretty good. Pantoja's really good too. So I, that's a fun fight. Uh, a lot of people know Jacasey. Uh He's a good fighter. He's had some losses, but I think he'll be able to put it together here and get a win streak going. Watch out for Luana's boxing. It's going to not be impressive. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Chin up in the air incorrect form i'm absolutely hating on it and i'm not trying to be a dick about it i just really hope she gets the proper training done because i don't think she should be going into these fights with that type of boxing you do that against chevchenko she will kick you in the head and your neck will be broken you'll be dead she might be paralyzed from the waist down if she ever gets a fight against valentina don't think it'll ever happen though that fight i don't think she'll make it that far to be 100 percent honest with you guys so she shouldn't have to worry too much she'll probably lose at a lower level and that's not me being a dick just me being 100 honest it's a true assessment of the fighter uh but it should be a great card i can't wait for it Thank you guys for watching the pre-fight show. See you guys in the post-fight analysis. I got the post-fight videos for most of the fights on the card. I usually just tend to pick the ones that I enjoyed the most and also that have the most value in terms of, you know, who they're fighting next and what people want to see. Uh, but then we'll just have like an overall post-fight result show and I'll talk about a couple of things. Thank you guys. See you.